Yes, people. It's been many years now I've been asking and encouraging the people of this country and in the Caribbean to produce their own food, to grow their own foods. Now, we remember, we recall during the time of COVID, you remember carefully, people used to come on television stations and radio stations and they would say that they have learned their lessons and that immediately after the impasse, after the situation, they were going to get into production agriculture. When things resumed to normal, everybody forgot about these promises that they made and people still continue to neglect farming, to neglect the agriculture sector. After the last hurricane, we saw a situation where we had another reminder. We had another reminder of the importance of agriculture, of we producing our own food. We lost a lot of our crop. And so to this, to this point now, to this, towards this end, we see a situation now where a uh, hand of bananas is costing $5 and in some cases $10. We know and we understand the law of supply and demand, but if there was more production in the country, the price of these commodities would have been lower. It is even of more importance, of paramount importance for poor people to actually produce their own food. Now, you don't have to be doing farming full-time. It is something that you can be doing part-time. There is a study that I read about. I read a report, a study, something that took place many years ago. The study was produced, um, published many years ago. But it was something that was done in the Caribbean and Latin America. And the, the conclusion of the study is showing us that um, poor people in the Caribbean and Latin America spend um, at least 50% of their salary of their earning to purchase food. And they're basically telling you that if you're a poor person, it is more, it's in your better interest to actually produce some or all of the food that you consume. But this is not what we see in places like St. Lucia. Sometimes the people who are the poorest are the ones who will not, not even plant not one banana tree, not one dashing. And in some cases, these people, are, these people have um, access to farmlands and they will refuse to plant every, anything. So these are the things that bring in more poverty. The other situation, the other thing that really messing, <laughs> messing up people is when you have a situation where um, people who actually um, engage in farming, it is a sad thing. Sometimes I observe them. You will see somebody leaving um, the rural areas to go and sell by the Castries market, for example. So they sell all their produce. They sell their nice yams, their nice dashing and those things. And they will use that money <laughs> to go and buy food that... Um, is inferior to some of the foods that they actually sell. You know, our grandmothers never used to operate like that. And this is why they were able to set the foundation that some of us benefit from right now. Our grandmothers, what they would do, when they, if they sell something by the market or wherever it is that they sell their produce, they would take their money and the only thing they would go to the supermarket to buy would be oil, oil, um, onions, garlic, salt fish, things like that. But we have a situation now where it is, it's almost like people have a, a taste for exotic things. And the things that they're making a fuss about are things that sometimes not even good for them. We see sometimes people go to the supermarkets and they they place a high premium on things like um, strawberry. And sometimes these, these things are suggested in movies. You know, people eat um, strawberries and cream and things like that. But there was something that I saw the last time. I was reading some kind of a 
scientific magazine or something. And it shows that strawberry is one of the foods with the highest percentage of um, pesticides, strawberries. And so sometimes you see people have a, a, a tendency to get into these um, exotic fruits. And these are some of the things that they will bring on themselves, a high concentration of pesticides in their foods. So basically, people, all of this, I'm just telling you to go back to the things that we know. Go back to the foods that we know. Okay? When you go by the market and you sell your, your produce, just buy some basic things, you understand? But do not go and buy these foods that you do not, you're not accustomed to. You understand? Do not go and get these things that you're not accustomed to. We was reading a study or something I, I saw in one of my textbooks that Chinese people, they do not get all of these different type of cancers that they have in North America. But when the person from China leaves China and he goes and he gets involved in the, kind of, in the foods that they have in North America, they get all of these cancers that they have over there. So we really need to be careful with the way in which we just copy other people's foods and their diet and things like that. So basically, people, I'm telling you, let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. It is going to help us in um, health-wise. It's, it's, it's going to reduce on the amount of chemicals that is in our foods. It will help us keep some of the money in this country. And for those people who are, um, are the Malawi, the poor people, it will help them because the study shows that poor people spend half of their half or more of their salary um, purchasing food. So if you can grow your own food, the person who is actually poor can actually bring up their situation in the socio socioeconomic situation that we have in the country. Keep the fire burning again. Let's plant, let's grow what we eat, and let us eat what we grow. I've been saying that for many years. Keep the fire burning.